Hello everyone and welcome to another Genshin Impact Achievements video. I took a break from Genshin. When I came back there were a ton of new achievements including the Challenger 5 card as well as the Chasm Lighter card. Shut up! Anyway today <laughs> today I'm going to be going over basically all of the new achievements and as always if you are looking for something in particular I'm the Timestamp King. If you need timestamps just go in the description. I always tag animations for specific enemies exactly where each achievement is going to be in the video. Normally I do like a single video but this one's going to be a bulk video so if you're looking for something in particular just uh check the check look down. All right, so first up, we've got one that is pretty easy to miss, and it involves you killing a specter without it accumulating any rage. These things accumulate rage when they're hit with a large chunk of damage, so basically you just have to kill it without critting. In my case, my albedo is a little bit of a wimp. <laughs> I used him for this one, and he never crits, so... <laughs> So I just used him, you just beat the yeah. out of the specter without doing big chunks of damage and you'll get the achievement. Pretty straightforward. Next up is another enemy achievement. Now this one is related to the Rift Hounds and it only applies to the large ones. So you can actually use the book in Genshin to track them down if you don't know where they spawn. Now for this achievement, you will want to kill the wolf while it's doing its roar animation. I would recommend bringing a strong party for this actually. Definitely bring a healer or something because they do have corruption and shields do not protect against corruption. So if you're sitting here doing a waiting game, trying to kill this thing, uh, you don't want to die because it'll just cause you a bunch of issues and wasted time. So make sure that you have a healer with you so that you can heal back up. Um, also a good tip is to bring your NMRE, have that equipped so that you can instant heal with food if you need to as well. But aside from that, you will just be wanting to look out for this animation, and if you kill it at the exact time, you will get the achievement. Now, I wanted to add real quick, this is a little section that I don't have recorded, uh, but there are a bunch of new achievements in the chasm that are for hunting down specific things in the area and like looking at them and interacting with them. Genshin loves putting like little thingies <laughs> for you to hunt down for achievements. There's plenty of videos on these already, so I will link a few in the description that will walk you through where to find each of them. For the record though, there are three of these for the chasm specifically. There's one for these thingies, one for these thingies, and one for these thingies, so make sure you go out and get all three thingy achievements. <laughs> now in addition to these like hidden item achievements, there's also another hidden achievement that's like related to talking a lot <laughs> um, and it's going to be related to this character or NPC named Talison? Talison? I don't know how to say his name <laughs> but uh, anyway my man all you want to do is talk to him about your journey now each of these things that you talk to him about are triggered by specific world quests and the main quest line for the chasm i will list what i believe to be the triggers for each of these this is not fact check with the wiki this is just my assumption because it is currently not exactly known which things are exactly which thing but this is what i would assume you will have to do after you do this, you'll talk to him a bunch for a total of six dialogues. After that, you're going to want to wait a full day, and when you come back, he will give you this manuscript as well as the achievement. Alright, this next one was added in 2.6, and it involves you activating 10, 30, and 60 tunes in your teapot using radiant spin crystals. These things are like little like, lifesaver candy looking things. I want to eat them so bad. You use them to activate music in your teapot at the Euphonium unbound item. This is a bit of an awkward achievement for the time currently because the serenity pot is down for maintenance indefinitely. So if you do not already have your little your little music box thing out, you can't do this achievement because you can't activate the music, unfortunately. But you can stockpile the lifesavers <laughs> and they will sit in your inventory and look absolutely hideous like this <laughs> until you are able to activate them. There's like 72 of these, I believe. 24 of them are in the open world and the other ones are purchasable from Chubby on the weekends in your teapot as well as your friend's teapots. 
Another achievement we have as of 2.6 is going to be the ding 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 achievement. And I'm gonna be honest, this achievement is trash. Like, it's just RNG. It's so bad. The prerequisite for this one is actually Cliffside Heroes past story. You will have to do that quest in order to unlock Old Cho's little digging game. After that point, you're just basically gonna have to mess around with your luck and RNG. The idea of this game is that if you dig up nothing, you're nowhere nearby the box. If you dig up cabin, you're somewhat close to the box and there's likely one explosive nearby. If you dig up iron, you're probably pretty warm and there's two or more explosives nearby, or maybe it's just two. And then after that point, it's just a guessing game of where the chest might be. As you can see, I had no idea. I, I literally just guessed. I guessed that one and it just happened to be the last one for me. It's all RNG. Good luck. <laughs> Alright, first up we have the Ruined Serpent, which is a new world boss as of 2.6. You will have to unlock this boss by doing some chasm stuff first. This achievement's super easy, you don't even have to defeat the boss, you just want to wait for it to do this like miasma animation, and once there's a bunch of goop on the floor, you will be able to use your Luminstone Adjuvant on it. Now, I had mine fully upgraded when I did this, but I believe you only need a level 8, as the level 8 will extend your Blooming Light range. There is also a single achievement for the Bethysmal Bishops in 2.6. Uh, this one is decently hard. I would say you need a good, reliable source of damage and have to keep the Vishops at similar health. I did this with a friend, and I would highly recommend doing this with a friend. Now, the idea here is to keep these both at relatively similar health bars, and there is a time frame that you will have to get them killed by before they start doing that uh, annoying swimming animation. So what we did basically was we got them both down to roughly about half health, at which they split off. One of you guys can take the one that jumps up on the wall while the other one remains focused on the first one. Also, if you haven't already gotten the achievement there, I did not get it there because I already had it. If you knock the bat, ba if you knock the guy off of the, the wall, <laughs> there's an achievement for that too. So anyway, you guys will just keep hounding on them and just keep them at similar health. When they get to decently low health, they will do this animation where they come in the middle, come together and do a laser beam. We did this fight a couple of times and I'm pretty certain that uh, after this laser beam attack is typically when they will separate and one of them will go swimming. Cannot confirm that or deny that. I do know that keeping them at similar health and defeating them before that laser beam attack is uh, what worked out best for us in the end. Onward to the Magatsu Mitaki Narokami no Mikoto, which is literally the most unnecessary long boss fight for my least favorite character in the entire game. I'm sorry I said it. And there's two achievements for her and they both involve specific attacks so I will make sure to show you guys the exact animations, timestamps below as always. Genshin loves naming attacks and then not telling you what they are or having anything about the boss in the information enemies tab. Love that for us, right? <laughs> um, you can do these both at the same time uh, in the same boss fight. Uh, we happen to do this separately twice because we messed up. The first one is the Wonders of the World achievement, and you will be looking for the X-shaped attack when the illusions come out. So if you can see here, I paused it so you can take a look. That X there is going to be coming from the one that you will want to hit. After you differentiate that, you can go ahead and knock her out and you will be good to go. The other achievement is going to be this attack that you are looking for in specific. She will bring out three electro things and you're just going to want to jump over each attack. Notice that you have to time it kind of good or kind of well, I guess. It's not just the outer ring, it's that inner part of the ring as well that you have to dodge. As far as I know, I'm, I think you can use Venti for this and just cheat basically, but but otherwise I would recommend just standing in one position, don't move at all, and just time your jumps. Next up is the Hydro Hypostasis boss. Now for this there are, as of 2.6, a total of four achievements for the boss. I will go ahead and link my video in the top right as well as the description for the original two if you haven't done those already. The new ones are both for the Challenger 5 card and the first one is super easy. All you have to do is pick up the little healing orbs that it spawns three times throughout the fight. The second one, <laughs> you might 
struggle a little bit with this one. The idea is to not kill the last three slimes that are spawned by the boss, and rather you're going to want to prevent them from closing in on the center. In this video, as you can see, I do have Emmy helping me again, but I did do this solo as well, just to make sure that this method would work solo. Uh, and it does, you just have to be pretty good about your aim with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip forward to the boss at low health. When the boss reaches low health, it will initiate in this end phase animation and it will spawn these three slimes. We both brought our traveler with us. And what you're going to want to do is make sure that your traveler ult is charged. You do not have to level up your traveler unless you just don't want them to die, but you're going to want to save your ult until the end. And basically what you'll do is you will spawn these walls with your ult and prevent them from coming in. In addition, you also have your E attack, which will hold them uh, in place as well and if any one of them tries to slip through you can go ahead and stall them by attacking them i have a clip of me doing this solo so you can see what it looks like uh, if you are just going to be doing it by yourself with your traveler uh, if you aim it correctly, you can block off two slimes with the walls, and then the third one you can monitor yourself or use your E to block off. Okay, time to do Thunder Manifestation boss. There are some old achievements for this one. I've linked that one in the description as well as in the top right, I think. Hopefully I know how to do that. I don't know if I've ever done that before. <laughs> These are also both new for the Challenger 5 card. The first one is easy. You need to get locked onto before attacking the boss. So basically you'll just run in and don't attack it and it will eventually lock onto you and you will get the achievement. The next one is all about dodging. Because of this, I would recommend using both stamina food as well as either Kaya or Razor on your team so that you can have a tiny bit extra stamina just in case something goes wrong. The two attacks that you will be looking out for are the boxed cage attack and the walls cage attack. Now both of these require a decent chunk of stamina to avoid so make sure that you are not dodging and that you're walking in between these attacks or uh, being conservative with your stamina so that you have it up when you do need to dodge these two cage attacks. I will show you really quickly what the two animations are for these two attacks that you're going to be wanting to look out for. This is going to be the animation for the walls attack, and this is the animation for the box attack. Now note that the box attack ha is triggered by the single circle that will uh, eventually start following you. Uh, this triple circle attack is not the same thing. This doesn't involve a, a cage or whatever, an electro cage, uh, so you don't need to worry about the triple circles actually. It's just the single circle. So remember these two animations, save your stamina for those, and just be on the lookout. If you dodge everything while you kill it, you will get the achievement. It is very helpful to, one, have a bow user so that you can attack from afar and kind of monitor what animations the boss is doing, but also, two, to have someone secondary that is going to be doing damage while you are dodging those attacks because it only locks onto one person at a time. And finally, we're looking at Senora. Now, this challenger five achievement for her is easy. Basically, you will just want to beat her up until she goes into the ice cocoon. Now, normally, you will collect these little fire butterflies to break the shield and complete the phase, but to get the achievement, you will have to break the cocoon without using them. Make sure to bring one or two pyro characters minimum so that this is easy and takes less time. Also, if you haven't gotten her other achievement as well, make sure to keep the Hearts of Fire and Eyes of Frost activated and don't break those so you can get both achievements at the same time. All right, and that is it. These are some of the new achievements as well as the entirety of the new challenger 5 series card if you are having a hard time with these achievements don't be afraid to just hold off and come back to them later especially if it's like dependent on whether or not you have like enough five stars to do like insane damage or not <laughs> that's nothing you have control over so don't beat yourself up about it if you can't do them just take your time bring some friends along with you if you have the opportunity to do so and just come back to it later if you guys like doing genshin achievements be sure to check out some of my other videos like i said they will be linked down in the description below and as always take care happy achievement hunting